looks like we're going September 20th class. And uh, I'll hit just a few things. Our approach again will be questions. I really do want your questions and, and we want you to ask questions and, and I'll stop sharing this, my screen periodically to encourage that. But if you just unmute yourself and ask me a question, I'll stop what we're doing and, uh, and we'll address your question. Otherwise, please keep your microphone muted so that we don't hear any, uh, any noise for, from anywhere else other than the speakers that we have going. And you can use the speaker view to see a, a, a large image of the person speaking if you want. Use the gallery view to see all participants and, and I'll be watching the chat as well. I failed to mention to you that we had three guests that are gonna be joining us over the next three weeks. The first session, we have our special guest is Katie Watt of the Explore Oak Ridge organization. Our second session is uh, uh, Mike Stello from the Oak Ridge Public Library. He's been with us before, you, some of you remember him. And Alan Lowe has been with us as well. He'll be our guest on the third session uh, to bring us up to date on the Museum of Science and Energy. And for anyone who's, uh, this is your first time, just a real quick review of who I am. Uh, I'm <laughs> born and raised in Middle Tennessee, married my high school sweetheart, Vietnam veteran, been in Oak Ridge 51 years, was the historian at the National Security Complex at Y-12, and am the historian of the city of Oak Ridge, the elder Highland View and the chaplain. And now I want to show you a short video of the economic impact of, e of DOE in East Tennessee. A recent report released by the East Tennessee Economic Council shows the Department of Energy's operations in Oak Ridge have a massive impact on the state's economy. The latest information shows research, national security, and environmental cleanup missions create good jobs for the region and inject billions into Tennessee's economy while providing key support to the nation. These activities generate an annual economic impact of $7.2 billion to the state of Tennessee and directly employ more than 14,000 people. That ranks DOE among the top five employers in the state. Approximately 2,500 of those employees focus exclusively on environmental cleanup. Their work is protecting these annual investments and creating new economic opportunities for the community. Having DOE spending $7.2 billion here a year is, annually is an impressive number. Of course, EM is just a component of that. Of course, that contributes further and further into the economy. Uh, but it, it shows what a big impact on the GDP for the state uh, that the DOE program and the EM program in particular have in this region and for the state. So our role here, not only are we freeing up one site, which is East Tennessee Technology Park, which is the first gaseous diffusion plant in the world that was cleaned up and took it from a contaminated site with old dilapidated buildings to now it's a site where there's active reindustrialization or new businesses uh, coming in out there to replace uh, the old DOE operations. But in addition to that, at the other two sites, Oak Ridge National Laboratory and the Y-12 National Security Site, we're making clean land available for those programs to expand as well. At many of the cleanup sites in DOE, once they clean the site up, DOE goes away. Here, that's not the case. Uh, certainly, the science and the NNSA mission continue for decades. So it, there are enduring missions here that you don't have at other cleanup sites. In addition to that, the way we're integrated in with the other two programs is pretty unique as well. Both NNSA at Y-12 and science, the science program at Oak Ridge National Laboratory have modernization programs and it, new facilities being built today. Uh, both those programs have about a billion dollars of new construction going on over the next several years there. And the EM program is integrated with that. So as soon as we make clean land available, 
they've got missions coming in right behind us. And, and I have to say, the partnership between DOE's Department of Environmental Management and the National Nuclear Security Administration is vital to that transformation. They're freeing up valuable real estate uh, that is going to be the corner piece of our transformation by allowing us to build new facilities and new capabilities that will be essential for national security going forward. Any square footage we get in this valley that we can use is, is very important for us. As, as Jay's team continues to um, complete the demolition, it will set the stage for us to start constructing the lithium processing facility. Here at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, the integration, the cooperation will benefit the future use of the laboratory. So the benefit to the community here in, in Oak Ridge is multifaceted from the EM program. And we're, we're making good on cleaning up uh, from the legacy contamination that was here and being able to make land available uh, back to the community to reuse at East Tennessee Technology Park. Recently, since Vision 2020 has been completed, there's been a real uptick in true businesses locating to the area. We've had a medical isotope facility that's already got 200 acres at Duck Island. Uh, nuclear energy company, it's taken 185 acres at K31 and K33 and two more projects. Uh, one is a biofuels company, the other is a nuclear fuels company, and they'll be uh, locating up very near where we're standing right now. Intermixed throughout the entire park, we'll have some large parcels that we set aside for recreational use, and so it's gonna be unique in that we're gonna have three different things that I think are complementary. I think it's part of what's attracting people to the site. They see our history center, they know we're gonna have a national park, they know they can have trails and greenways and bicycle paths right beside their businesses where we've got waterfront and riverfront property. It's going to be a gorgeous site. We sit here today planning an airport. We've recently sold uh, two different tracts of property, actually. We think there'll be a number of co-locators. Uh, there was a vision, there was a plan, and it was executed. And the execution was the cleanup, and it is what enabled us to recreate this site. 40 years of operation, almost 40 years of it just being idle, and now we're here in 2021 looking for a bright future. We had three guests that are gonna be joining us over the next three weeks. The first session, we have our special guest is Katie Watt of the Explore Oak Ridge organization. Our second session is uh, uh, Mike Stello from the Oak Ridge Public Library. He's been with us before, You, some of you remember him. And Alan Lowe has been with us as well. He'll be our guest on the third session uh, to bring us up to date on the Museum of Science and Energy. And you, if you remember the very last session we had last time, I spoke about the uh, first road coming through uh, this area, going from this area to Middle Tennessee to the Cumberland settlements. And this did not show, you didn't get to see the actual bridge and the historical marker that's there. So I, I put this up just as a, a review of the last part of what we were talking about at our last session. I would really like to get this bridge repaired, get that uh, column or abutment there, let, get it placed back uh, and pull that dirt out from behind it. But I've not been able to accomplish that yet, but it seems to be pretty stable. It's sitting on the on the floor of the creek there. And I, I don't think it's fallen any further in the last year or so, but this is a, a, a very important aspect of Oak Ridge. It comes right by the Midtown Community Center. And uh, uh, speaking of the Midtown Community Center, Katie has succeeded in putting, and she'll tell you more about this in a few minutes, but she succeeded in putting a historical marker there to recognize the Midtown Community Center, uh, which some of you know as the Wildcat Den. But that bridge is just 
uh, to the east of that uh, of that community center today. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to you about these markers and and Katie will say even more, but this one is up at the Children's Museum. In fact, uh, both of these are up at the National Park area <clears throat> where the uh, flat top is now located. This is what the flat top looks like at present. And uh, in, there in the works is a plan to build a, uh, a hutment, a, a replica hutment that'll go up there by the Children's Museum by that flat top and uh, it will be completed and it, the interior as well as the exterior. Uh, we have the same person that built the stove for the K-25 History Center that's going to build another one for us to go in this replica hutment that'll be going up there. Uh, Ray Garrett is the one that is actually pulling this together for us and he will uh, he will make this into a Rotary Club project and we will have it completed in the next few months and, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, have it open for the public before too very long. Okay, I promised you a treat now and the treat is our special guest is <laughs> from Explore Oak Ridge. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let Katie take over and uh, bring you her presentation. Okay, Katie. Thank you, Ray. And thanks everybody for having me with you this Monday morning. Um, I do have some exciting things to kind of talk about. Um, just a little bit of background. I am the president of our uh, Convention and Visitors Bureau. I've been here going on three years now. I come from a long background of marketing uh, financial institutions. I uh, marketed a couple of credit unions around town for over 30 years. So um, I went from marketing finances to marketing our wonderful city and it has just been a joy to be here and to be able to do that. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, there's always something great going on. And so with that, I'm going to share my screen with you all. Can you all see that? Yes, got it. It looks real good. Okay. Um, so uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of background about the Convention and Visitors Bureau, we are actually a sub-department from the city, but we are not funded with city dollars. We are actually funded with tax dollars that are paid by our visitors that come to town. So when someone comes and stays in one of our eight hotels, then they pay an occupancy tax and a portion of that is given to us to be able to market the city. So um, we are not funded by the actual residents of Oak Ridge, but by the people who come and visit us. Um, our goal that we are charged with is to promote the city and not only just the, uh, the history of the city, but also our natural resources, our innovative science and technology, our very diverse culture with our arts. And, um, but the main thing that most people come to town or contact us about is our very unique history. Um, so heritage tourism is the number one tourist attraction here in our city. Um, as you know, I'm sure Ray's gone over this quite a bit. Um, we are fortunate enough to have our own natural national park here. Um, it was established in 2015. Um, it actually, as 
as identified with four different spots and also the um, uh, Alexander Guest House, which I'll show you here in just a minute. Um, but part of the, the park is telling a story. So the park wants to tell a story and we have jumped in to help the park tell that story. Um, one of the things that our national park system does is they put out what they call wayside markers. And those markers help tell an interpretive story of our, our city. Um, they're, they're all over the United States in the different parks and um, we're no different. So we're in the process of working on getting as many of those interpretive markers out in our city as possible. So we're doing this in cooperation with the park. Um, so far, we have 19 that have been installed. They are designed and written by our national park. Um, we have then gone back and we have listed them all on the Explore Oak Ridge website and are very diverse culture with our arts. And um, But the main thing that most people come to town or contact us about is our very unique history. Um, so heritage tourism is the number one tourist attraction here in our city. Um, as you know, I'm sure Ray's gone over this quite a bit. Um, we are fortunate enough to have our own natural national park here. Um, it was established in 2015. Um, it actually, as as identified with four different spots and also the um, uh, Alexander Guest House, which I'll show you here in just a minute. Um, but part of the, the park is telling a story. So the park wants to tell a story and we have jumped in to help the park tell that story. Um, one of the things that our national park system does is they put out what they call wayside markers. And those markers help tell an interpretive story of our, our city. Um, they're, they're all over the United States in the different parks and um, we're no different. So we're in the process of working on getting as many of those interpretive markers out in our city as possible. So we're doing this in cooperation with the park. Um, so far, we have 19 that have been installed. They are designed and written by our national park. Um, we have then gone back and we have listed them all on the Explore Oak Ridge website. And I have put our website here for you. It's very easy to find. It's just exploreoakridge.com. Um, but we have gone through and listed the ones that we have now. Along with that, we have a link to the state historical markers that are also there. So we want people to be able to find all of those markers that help tell the story of Oak Ridge. So this is a list of the, um, the ones that we currently have out. Several of them are at the, uh, the Children's Museum which is the National Park Headquarters. So we have one up there for the Victory Gardens and the, pollinate, the Pollination Gardens. Um, there's one up there for the Oak Ridge Schools since the Children's Museum is actually in one of our old elementary schools. So we have them around town. Um, you'll, you've probably seen some of them. You'll now see more of them. A couple of them are behind the fence, um, so they are not listed on here. They are actually at 9731. Um, so we do have a couple of them that are over there. So hopefully we'll be able to get people over to that one to see it also. Um, we do have a few more that are in the works right now that are being written. So, um, so we are continuing to add to this list. 
All right. Um, what the wayside markers do is they tell the story of what was in that facility or was on that spot. So one of them that we we started with one of our first ones actually was for the Alexander Guest House and for the things that went on there. So the wayside markers are placed and they help to tell that story of what went on there back during the Manhattan Project. So this one tells about um, how much a room was. Um, it tells if you, you know, if you wanted a with a connecting bath or if you wanted a shared bath. I mean, so it kind of tells a little story of who stayed there um, and just, just lets you kind of know what went on in that location before. There's one out by the water. Um, it's out at Mountain Lake at our rowing venue. And um, it talks about the purpose of the water, why, why we were chosen because of our access to the waterways and because of the, the power that we were able to, to have here. So, um, so this one is out over by the, uh, it's between the rowing venue and the pavilion out there. So, um, and it was also one of our very first ones. Of course, Chapel on the Hill, you can't have a marker unless you're going to note um, our wonderful Chapel on the Hill. It does talk about how it was, um, you know, an army chapel, how it was placed there, how multiple different denominations were able to utilize that facility. And um, so it, it, it does tell the, the story of, of the, uh, the chapel up, up on the hill. I went the other way, sorry. We do have one down at the Friendship Bell. These were some of the first ones that we, we did put out. We felt like these were probably the most important ones to get that story started. Um, the story, this one tells the story of the bell, tells the story of you know who designed it, why it was there, um, you know, what it cost to put it there, how large it is, uh, the importance of that uh, that peace bell in our community. Some of the things that we we have markers on are not there anymore. So the terminal, the bus terminal is not there anymore. However, we went to the we went to the actual location where that bus terminal was. And that is where it is. So what we what we tried to do with the park service was to make sure that they showed what actually was there in the location of where it is now. So this one is actually on the turnpike and it is in the Security Square Strip Center where um, Sassy Pants Sweets and Treats is and the record store and um, um, Rainbow Florist. It's right across the street from the hospital. So the great thing about a lot of these wayside markers is it does show people what was actually there during that time. As Ray mentioned, we did put one at the Midtown Community Center because it, it number one, is still one of our original buildings that we do have that is still left. And there were so many things that went on in that building, not just during the Manhattan Project, but also after the Manhattan Project, um, you know, when it was the Wildcat Den and our, st and our students were there. And now it's our history museum and, you know, Oak Ridge Heritage and Preservation Association has taken that and made it a wonderful museum um, and there's always changing exhibits going on there. Some of the other things, just to kind of talk about what we also do here. Um, a lot of the other things that we do here at the Visitors Bureau is we help to promote other things that go on in town. 
So if the History Museum is having a special exhibit, uh, just recently we helped promote the Oak Ridge 85 exhibit that is there and the ribbon cutting that went on along with that. Um, so we help to promote other things that go on within our town. Um, so, you know, so, such things as we have the free summer session, the concerts that are sponsored by the credit union over at Bissell Park. Um, we were supposed to have had one this past weekend, but unfortunately the rain decided it wanted to cancel it. Um, but other things such as the Secret City Festival, we don't actually from, we don't actually put on that event. We help them. Um, but the main thing we do is we help to promote it. Uh, we promote it internally. We promote it within our city. We promote it um, social media. We promote it on radio. We try to get the message out to as many people as possible to let them know what great things we have going on here in Oak Ridge. One of the things that we do put on ourselves is our Secret City Half Marathon. This is the 13th year we will be doing that. And um, just to let you know, last year, we were the only in-person marathon in East Tennessee. We, um, all the others were all virtual. We did have a virtual aspect of it, which we will have this year for those people. But we also were able to safely put on an event and let people get out and enjoy our area, you know, run through uh, the streets and, and enjoy the scenery. So it was very successful. We, um, we had 650 runners between the 5K and the half marathon. And all of those runners, like I said, were thrilled to be out and about and actually be able to see people. But we did things very differently. We did not do massive starts like a lot of races do. We did an individual start where they started one at a time. We wanted to make sure everybody was safe. We provided um, masks for everybody uh, to go on that they were, could then pull down once they got out of the crowd. So we wanted to make sure that we were providing something within the city, but that people could be safe and secure with. So we are continuing, we're doing it again this year. We are getting some good numbers. People um, are signing up all over the place. Last year, we had 23 states represented and we had two from out of the country. So that was kind of a neat thing to be able to, to see. The Explore Oak Ridge website, um, we've been kind of charged by the city to try to make our events page kind of a central location where people can come and look for events. So um, if you were to go to our page today, you would see that tomorrow night, there's going to be a um, festivities over in Bissell Park. And it's an International Peace Day. It's going to be at the Friendship Bell. Um, tomorrow is actually the United Nations Peace Day that has been set um, for the world. So the, um, the Friendship Bell Committee has decided that they wanted to have an event. So we are helping them promote that. They will, um, they'll have music. The orchestra will be there. They're going to have a singer. They're gonna have uh, some special guests from the Girl Scouts that are gonna come and sing. So it's gonna be a community event that people can come. You can spread out, be safe. Um, it's, it's gonna be a really nice festivity. Same thing with the Children's Museum. They have an international festival coming up. So we try to promote everything that's going on with our city to give more people things to do. Um, one of the things that we've been trying to promote with people is for the people who live here to actually take a few days and 
be a tourist, you know, be a tourist in your own hometown. Go around and look at the great things that we've got here so that when you have people come in town, then you can say, okay, we're not going to go up to the mountains today. We're going to go to the Museum of Science and Energy, and we're going to go to the Children's Museum or the K-25 History Museum, or we're going to go to a walk in one of our greenways. So um, we are trying to encourage people to get out and actually be a tourist here in our own hometowns. A few of the things just to kind of go over um, what we want people to, to remember that we've got here and that we promote very heavily. Um, we have some of the best museums in our state. Um, we have the American Museum of Science and Energy. Um, it is a nationally known museum. People come from all over the world to it. And if you haven't had a chance to go by, it's, it's a wonderful museum. They do have some different changing galleries that, that change periodically. It's a, great, it's a great museum to have a membership to because then you can go and enjoy all of the different um, exhibits that go on. We have our, our wonderful children's museum, which when our visitors come to town, we, we tell them that it's not just for children. Um, you know, there's a child inside all of us that we all need to get out there and go to the Children's Museum because they have some wonderful displays. Um, our new K-25 History Museum has gained a lot of momentum. It opened during the pandemic and 13 days after it opened, it had to close its doors. So it is our brand new museum in town. And um, it has gained a lot of momentum here lately with people coming in to see it. The, um, our Oak Ridge History Museum, which uh, we always tell people tells the personal side of what went on here during the Manhattan Project. It tells what went on behind the gates that for day-to-day -day life, it tells why we were chosen. It looks at the history of you know, why General Groves looked at this area, why we were, we were picked, what went on here. Um, and then it's got um, several different areas where you can, they also do have some different changing exhibits that go on. Um, right now, as I mentioned, the Oak Ridge 85 exhibit is, is in there. And if you've not seen that, um, you need to take an afternoon and stop by and uh, and really really check out that exhibit. It's it's a wonderful wonderful exhibit that we've got. Um, then we also have our K twenty five History Center, which is actually over at the New Hope Center. Um, just to kind of let you know, during COVID, all of our museums were closed. So when people started getting that itch to get out and want to tour and want to actually do some little small trips with their families, you know, put their family in a car and take a little road trip or take a Sunday after or a Saturday drive and go somewhere close by. Our museums were not opened, so we were not able to let people experience that for a while. They did open up in June of this year and we were thrilled for that. Um, but because of that, we had to make a big, big switch as to what we mostly promoted. And we looked at our greenways. Um, we looked at the greenways, the trails, and the wonderful things that we have that you can do outdoors here in Oak Ridge. Um, we are one of the few areas around that has 14 maintained greenways. Um, and they are of multiple distances. Some of them are uh, from a quarter mile to multiple, you know, to, you know, multiple miles that go across like the, um, down, um, down by the, um, um, <laughs> sorry, I just kind of went blank, down by the Heritage Center and all. So we've got some great uh, greenways. We have over 85 miles of those. On top of that, Hall Ridge has 780 acres that people can explore. 
So within the Hall Ridge trails, there are multiple little trails that go off to the side and uh, there's different levels. There's very, very easy levels. And then there's some very hard levels. They have some great bike trails out there. If, uh, if you're a biker or you know of different people that are, or you've got family members that like to mountain bike, Hall Ridge has some great places to be able to get out and ride your mountain bike. We have access to the UP UT Arboretum. So we have uh, 250 acres out there with some of the most unusual flora and fauna that you've ever seen in the area. We have 30 miles of flat water. Um, we are known for our rowing venue. So we have rowers, as most of you know, that come in during, our, during the spring and they practice and then they come back and they compete. And we love to see those rowers come to town and to utilize those waters. Um, we just recently had a national rowing regatta here in town. And we had over a thousand rowers from across the country. Um, we had people from all four corners of the United States that came in to row the waters here. So we promoted our outdoor, our our walking, our running, our biking, um, that we were very pet friendly on those trails so you could get out with your family, with your pet and enjoy all those great things outdoors that we have. So as Explore Oak Ridge, um, you know, our ultimate goal is to tell our story. But like I said earlier, the main thing people really want to know about our story is about our history. And we have the most unique history of anybody in our country. I mean, who else can say that they were a secret and nobody knew about them um, for years? Um, that sure couldn't happen now because somebody would go home and send an email to somebody and it would hit the internet and that would be all there is. So the, the fact that we were able to be a secret and to be able to have that that in our history to be able to say that is very unique and uh, people just can't believe it. People that come into our visitor center, when we start telling the story, they're like, well, I knew a little bit, but had no idea about all this other stuff. So we have a very unique story to tell and we are trying to do our best to do that, um, to tell that story. And, you know, like Ray said, the uh, those wayside markers that we're doing with the park service are really allowing us to tell that story especially when we're not here we can now tell people to go to those different wayside markers to learn our story um, and if we're not here then they're on our website and you can you can get to them we decided to put all the directions to all of them instead of just putting a picture, because we thought, you know what? We want them to go there. We want them to see what's there. We want them to see the different things that are there now. Um, you know, we want them to go to Jackson Square and, and eat at uh, Dean's or go to the soup kitchen and, and have some soup or go up to Razzleberries and have some uh, ice cream from the ice cream lab. So, um, you know, we want those people to get out and enjoy the, same, the things that we've got here um, that nobody else has. So we've been promoting our city. Um, so we started doing a billboard campaign and um, we've, gotten, we've gotten some good response to it. Uh, people have been calling in, making, making uh, plans, wanting day trips. There've been a lot of day trips here recently. And we love those people to come in for day trips and to, to see what's going on. And if they'll come back two or three times, who knows? Maybe they'll decide they want to move here. So um, with that, that is our website also. So if you want to see what's going on in our great community, that's the place to check it out. Or you can always shoot us an email. Um, we're, we're a small but mighty team here at the Visitors Bureau, and um, we 
try to help anybody and everybody that comes through the doors or calls or or sends us an email because like I said we want to share that story we we want to now share those secrets we had to keep them a secret for so long now's the time that we get to share them so um does anybody have questions or want to talk about anything if you will stop sharing your screen yeah okay now thank okay. you now let's get it up to a gallery view anyone that has any questions for katie just unmute yourself and ask away all right I have a question. Okay. Um, where are you, where are you, I'm not, I, my, long story, but anyway, where are you located in Oak Ridge? Okay. I can, when I get down there, once COVID is better, I will get down there and I would like to know where are you? <laughs> we are actually, we rent space in our Chamber of Commerce. So we are right on the Oak Ridge Turnpike in the middle of town. And, um, you know, we're, we're here Monday through Friday and, um, but if, you know, you can always give us a call. We can send things to you if you're not here locally and, uh, we'll talk to you about different things. We'll help you set things up. Um, it's just a great, um, it's a great area. So Katie, give Thank her the you. street, give her the street address. She might even oh, be okay. the GPS. Okay. The street address is 1400. And I can put it in the okay, chat too if you want, want me to. I came prepared. I'm taking oh, okay. notes. <laughs> uh, it's we're at 1400 Oak Ridge Turnpike. Okay. And the zip code here is 37830. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Gail. Any other questions for Katie? Where is the entrance to the K25 Museum? I'm sorry, you're, I didn't hear that. I, I got it. Entrance? He wants to know where the entrance to the K25 Museum is. Okay, um, the entrance to the museum, you actually turn into the Horizon Center. No, no I'm sorry, the Heritage Center. <laughs> you actually turn into the Heritage Center and you go past the little building on the right that everybody thinks is the museum <laughs> and go back to where, um, there's a, a portal on your left and then you turn left. You can't miss it once you get to that point and you look to the left. Um, the fire department is up there and the building has great big flags. Um, we are working on some additional signage to get you into there. Um, so we are working on that with the museums to try to help get some of that, that going. I, was able to get a grant to help with some of our directional signage around town. Is there a sign on the turnpike? There is a sign on, uh, yes, on the turnpike from about Blair Road on down, it, it points you that direction. It's 11, it's actually 11 miles from the center of town. So okay. it's 11 miles from my office straight out before you turn off the turnpike. So the actual street address for the K-25 History Center is 652, that's 652 Enrichment Street. Now those signs are not very large signs and we're after Katie to help us get bigger signs, but they're a part of the Heritage Center signage. And if you look, there'll be a line under there that says K-25 History Center. You actually turn in to what used to be Portal 2, the main entrance to K-25. And then you drive uh, <coughs> north, north on that street 
until you get to uh, Old Portal 4 and you turn left there and it will be in on your right. It's a, the second story of the fire uh, station there. And, and it's right at the base of the K-25U footprint. If you haven't been there, you really need to go. It's, yeah. it's an excellent museum. Other questions for Katie? What are the brown signs that say Secret City? I'm sorry, what are the? There are brown signs every once in a while saying Secret City. I, I'm not sure uh, what you're talking about. I'm not sure. Uh, where do you see them, Yuri? I see them on Illinois. On Illinois Avenue? Them. There are two or three of them around the town. You did say bomb signs. No. Or brown. Brown, brown. Did you say brown signs? Yes. Okay, those are for the Manhattan Project National Historical Park. Yeah. And they point you to go up to the Children's Museum, which is their headquarters. And you had a question. I did. I was wondering, for those people who live in Oak Ridge or are still very committed to Oak Ridge, what are the best things we could do to help promote Oak Ridge? Mm -hmm in light of all of the things you've told us, Katie? Um, you know, a lot of the things that uh, that we, we really are asking people is just to A, get out and enjoy it. And to B, if you are on social media, talk about it. Um, talk about it to your friends, talk about it to your family. Um, you know, if you see a post on the Explore Oak Ridge site that that's talking about something, share that. Um, if you're on any of the museum sites, share those stories. Um, we're, you know, it's, it's, today is now a big sharing society and people will go to places that friends of theirs have told them about or friends of theirs have, have shared with them. Um, so those experience, getting those experiences out to other people to encourage them to come and, and see it. Um, and then other than that, keep going and enjoying it. I mean, there's, there's so much we've got. Um, you know, I know that the History Museum right now is working on an exhibit that has to do with, um, with our fire department. You know, they're working on, they're bringing some of the, um, the exhibit from the, the fire museum up to the history museum so people can see it. Um, you know, there's, there's different changing exhibits that go on at the Museum of Science and Energy that are just great. Um, K25 has a changing gallery. You know, right now there is a display in there called MUD, which is really a fun and cool exhibit that talks about all the mud that was here when Oak Ridge started. You know, you just don't realize how much construction was going on constantly till you see some of these pictures. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'm in several different organizations with Oak Ridgers and I'm not sure they really appreciate how much we've got in Oak Ridge, so. That's that's what I was asking. Thank you yeah. very much. And and you'd be surprised how many people who do live here don't know all the great things we've got. Yeah, no, I would not be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good opening for me to add that any of you who are members of organizations that would like to have a speaker to come, I recommend Katie. She'd be glad to come and talk about it oh, yeah. Oak Ridge and uh and help your organization to better understand what we have here that is truly unique. Uh, we, used, we did some tourism studies years ago now uh, with some focal groups. And in all cases, people were astounded by how much 
history <laughs> there is here in Oak Ridge. And they would just die to have that in their little community as, as we have yeah. here. So we, we've got, a, we've got a, a jewel of a history uh, to share. And not only that, we're, <laughs> we're still making history every day. So it, it continues to be uh, be viable. Other questions for Katie? I Thank think, you so I much. I think for so long we were we were told not to talk. <laughs> yeah. uh, that it's just taken a long time for us to be able to really share what Oak yeah. Ridge was all about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we uh, get a we get quite a few bus tours that come in. Um, <laughs> you would be surprised the number of bus tours that, that do come in and will stop at the History Museum and go to the American Museum of Science and Energy. And, um, you know, a lot of those bus tours too, we, we not only promote just Oak Ridge, but we promote our entire county because we have 300 years of history just in Anderson County. So to be able to promote that and have somebody you know, stay here in Oak Ridge and maybe take a day and go to the Museum of Science and Energy and to the History Museum. And then maybe the next day they go to um, Museum of Appalachia or the, the Coal Creek Museum um, or they, um, you know, so we've got a, we've got 300 years worth of history right here in one county of Tennessee. There's so many little secrets and little untold stories just in, in this area. Um, I know the governor was here a couple weeks ago when they did the um, announcement, when they, when they opened up the Oak Ridge 85 exhibit and the governor was here during that week. And um, we're, we're right now celebrating, you know, 225 years of Tennessee. And that alone is one of the untold stories of, of the uh, of the state, just like the Secret City was an untold story for so long. Is there anything being done about access to the graphite reactor? Um, right now, the graphite reactor, because it is on the ORNL reservation, they are not allowing any visitors to come in due to COVID. Um, so as soon as they allow that, we will start taking people back from the museum. The plans so now. It's, we're, we're, kind of what, we're kind of at the mercy of ORNL because it's on their actual campus. The, the normal access to the graphite reactor for the public is through the DOE public bus tours that originate at the American Museum of Science and Energy. We had hoped to get those tours going again this year but we're not able to. And, and now the decision has been made not to run those tours until 2022. Now they will open again, provided COVID will allow it, they will open again on, in March of 2022. And they run from March to November of each year. Our plans right now are to have those tours start in March of 2022 and include the graphite reactor as well as the K-25 History Center. And oh, by the way, they're working right as we speak at building 9731 to put restrooms in up on the, the top floor, the ground floor there uh, so that public can have uh, access to that building uh, through tours as well. There won't be a, a drive up access like there will be to the History Center and to the, to the Y-12 History Center and the K-25 History Center. You can drive up to K-25 now, but you can't go to the New Hope Center because of the COVID to see the Y-12 History Center, nor can you go to the graphite reactor. But our hope is to get those tours going again next year. Charlie, did you have a question for Katie? Not so much for Katie. I had a, a follow up to Uri's question about the brown signs. Yeah, there are some that are yes. in the area that are in the, the the general area here that say they are brown and they're different from the national park signs. They say top secret. 
tour. Yes. And okay. these are associated with the TN Vacation website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I haven't done too much for that. I think I tried following a, one branch of it one day and it got me uh, to an elementary school in Oliver Springs. And that was the end of that. So, um, yeah. but th there's, there's a, quite a bit of rootage on the, uh, on the, highways and byways paths or, or something on the TN vacation website, but that's what they, so we got two sets of brown signs going around here now, I think. Yeah. Yes, you're right, Charlie. There is a top secret trail. It actually runs across the state. There's different little outlets on it. Um, they have not updated those maps here recently. We're waiting on our new shipment of them, but there are different little locations where you can, uh, you can take little different tours and it is called the top secret trail. There's, there's an actual brochure or map of, of the state that shows that trail. Uh, I have one of the originals, but Katie, you say they're doing some new ones. I hope they're, they're working. They're supposed to be working on some new ones. That was the last information we heard. Yeah. And I like you, Charlie, I've tried to follow those things. And it, it's almost impossible without the little brochure that has the map on it. Yeah. The signs are so far apart and they'll point you off road and you'll go in that direction. And for the life of you, you'll not be able to find another sign that'll get you back on the trail. <laughs> I, know yeah, I, I thought maybe, a, yeah, I, I was just trying to follow the signs. And I thought it might be kind of neat to do that. And I'd seen them on the website, but, uh, a detailed brochure with some point by point turns might be yeah. as well. Yeah. That's the way and and Katie will have those at uh, at Explore Oak Ridge there at uh, at the Chamber of Commerce. Other questions for Katie. Well, Katie, we surely do appreciate you being appreciate with us today. You. With us today. <laughs> Taylor, do you have a phone, uh, a question? I'm sorry, that's a, I can't keep up with any other questions for Katie. All right, we'll leave it at that then, Katie. Thank you very much okay. for joining us and uh, we really do appreciate you being here. You're welcome to stay Thank around you. for the rest or if you need to go, we understand, okay? I uh, appreciate you all having me. And like I said, if you have any questions, you can just contact us here at the Visitors Bureau and raise right. If anybody ever needs a speaker or wants to hear more about what's going on, we're, we're here. All right. So thank you all. You bet. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Let's go back to this one. And I'm hoping that you're seeing my screen. And what I'm showing you is a, a portion, a portion of the Oak Ridge History Museum that features Ed Westcott. See, some of his cameras are here. Uh, I was giving this lady a tour, and uh, we stopped in the Ed Westcott portion of the uh, Oak Ridge History Museum. I, I think they've done a really good job putting putting that together. Uh, this is all of the, or some of the awards that Ed received and some of the pictures that he made of presidents. So that's a good example of the exhibits there. Uh, this is the historical marker that's, or the wayside marker that's by the swimming pool. And I put this up to remind me to tell you that there is now a uh, state historical marker that will be approved on October the 8th for installation at the swimming pool. So that, uh, that marker will go in place. 
sometime after October the 8th. Here's a historical marker that, uh, that has been replaced. It was uh, stolen off, as you can tell here in the lower right. And for many years, it was missing. So I was able to get it replaced and it is now the Oak Ridge City historical marker is at the gatehouse on the turnpike where it was originally placed. There's also another one that's out by the UT Arboretum. So when you're coming in from uh, Knoxville from the south, you can see a marker there at uh, UT Arboretum. I had them to trim some trees around it so you can actually see it now. And I had, and we've got this one installed at the, on the west end of town at the uh, guest house on the turnpike. Katie mentioned that we had the governor here. We did, he spoke at the uh, uh, Oak Ridge 85 recognition for the Clinton 12 and the Oak Ridge 85 that was held earlier in September. Uh, he spoke to a large crowd over at the Scarborough uh, Community Center. This, uh, I wanted to bring this up to mention Ruth Huddleston. She is uh, the only Calutron girl remaining that I'm aware of that I can utilize to tell her story. Uh, she's done a really good job for me over the years. Uh, she, uh, uh, we spoke at, uh, uh, at the University of Tennessee to uh, about 400 people. Uh, the Japanese have made a documentary film of her life. And uh, I, I say this to ask you, if you know of anyone who's still alive, who was a Calutron girl, uh, please let me know. Uh, I, I want to be sure that we uh, are able to share as much as we can of our history. And that's a unique piece of our history. She was included in the most recent book published by Chris Wallace, uh, Countdown to 1945. And, uh, they contacted me to get to her. And uh, when they were interviewing her, they learned so much about her story that he created almost an entire chapter devoted to her. So I'm very proud of, of Ruth. This is a uh, photo that was taken just a, a few weeks ago at the American Museum of Science and Energy where they were unveiling a new uh, exhibit there. And uh, Alan will tell you about that when he comes to speak with us on, uh, on the third session. So this is a picture I wanted you to see. There is the, I wrote a story some years ago about the air be aircraft beacon house that uh, now, that, that was here before the Manhattan Project. It's out near the uh, Oak Ridge National Laboratory, right up near a power line cut. It's actually in the power line cut for TVA. This is a picture that I made of it at the time that I wrote the story about it. It's now been refurbished and uh, is painted back to its original colors and and it's uh it's being maintained and i just wanted to share that picture with you now we're getting very close to the end i'll save some of that for next time let me let me wrap up quickly by giving you one more chance to answer, ask any questions you have, and then we're going to close out for this week. And again, I apologize. One more question. Please. 
One more question. Yes. In the 80s, there was on the reservation a lot of depleted uranium storage. Yes. The energy content of that depleted uranium, if used in a breeder reactor, was exceeding the oil reserve, energy reserves in Saudi Arabia. Is there going to be any mention of that? I, I had not intended to mention that. I'd be glad to talk about it. The fact that that, uh, that de depleted uranium stored is, it, it, it is still here. <laughs> it hadn't gone anywhere. We still have it. Uh, now, there's a couple of things you have to remember. There are the tails from the gaseous diffusion process, and I'm not sure exactly where those are located. They're still available. In Paducah. Uh, in Paducah. They're in Paducah now. Uh, I'm not surprised. I didn't know whether with, where they were, but I'm not surprised. Uh, they are demolishing, beginning the process to demolish the uh, gaseous diffusion buildings at both Paducah and Portsmouth, but I'm sure those tails will be retained. And then there's some depleted uranium that's stored at Whitefoil as well, and that's not going anywhere, I'll guarantee you. Other questions? Yes, Darth. I don't have a question. I just wanted to share something. It's a story that when my daughter and I, Elizabeth, uh, we, we were out in California and she was at, uh, doing Scottish dancing out there, Highland dancing. And she had a problem with uh, one of her braces kind of went into her gum. And so we had to look, find a local dentist and we went and he was working on her and he, he saw we were from Oak Ridge and he, he made the statement, is the pool still there? I mean, it had been years and years that he had, you know, but it, people remember things like that. Yeah. And to this day, I just smile when I remember that. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> You're exactly right. People do have a memory. If they've ever been to Oak Ridge, they remember yeah. things about our city and the pool, the <laughs> swimming pool being one of them. And we hope to be able to maintain that, uh, that aspect of our city as well. And again, thank you all for being with us today. And uh, I really do appreciate your questions and sharing of stories too. And I look forward to our coming two sessions that we'll have next Monday, starting uh, in, the, in the morning at 9.30. So, Thank you all very much for being with us today. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Ray. You bet. Okay, uh, thank you. Yep.